Hello and welcome to News Click. We are going to today discuss the issue of WTO and Trump's declaration of war essentially on China. This follows, of course, his earlier declaration regarding tariffs on steel and aluminium. Vishwajit, we have discussed these issues earlier. Does it appear that the, in continuation of what we saw as a tariff ri raising of tariffs on aluminium, steel, etc., which was really unilateral, didn't go through WTO process. I think WTO has not even been notified of this. Now, again, the US has taken a unilateral decision against Chinese goods and has decided to sanction them, essentially. This is outside the WTO framework. So what does it really mean for WTO and what does it mean for future trading system in the world? So this is a, a very serious challenge to the global trading system because if the largest economy, um, the most powerful in this unilateral world, takes a step like this, and I would say a series of steps, you know, you know, he's just taken the, the second step uh, two days back, uh, then this doesn't augur uh, well for the uh, multilateral trading system at all, the rules-based system. Uh, we are uh, virtually then thrown into a world of, you know, lawlessness, where uh, no one actually follows any rules does uh, everything that uh, suits uh, the political establishment and whatever they want to do with the domestic constituencies and uh, you know just carry on uh, in, in that kind of a framework. So uh, I think that we are now stepping into a huge unknown kind of a territory, something that we have not seen in the past 70 years. Uh, and now the uh, situation is, is, is quite different because uh, 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 from what we saw pre-war, in the interwar year, the, in the depression years, because uh, you have uh, countries with huge, huge stakes in the global economy. You know, the globalization project in the 30s uh, was not as elaborate as we, we have today. So there are uh, um, uh, countries with huge stakes in the global economy. And if uh, uh, the two largest economies are fighting it out uh, in this manner, and why I'm saying fighting it out, because China is not going to take it lying down. So China is going to use this unilateral ways, uh, uh, you know, quite uh, surely, and it's going to come very soon. And one of the things that the Chinese do very well is currency manipulation. So, so, so they can, they have their instruments to counter what Trump has been doing. So we are into, in a situation where uh, because of these two, uh, you know, big elephants fighting out there, there's going to be a lot of collateral damage in the sense that a lot of smaller countries, developing countries, are, are, uh, could actually get crushed because of uh, this kind of uncertainty. Vishwajit, there have been an argument the WTO has helped the developing countries much less than the developed countries. In fact, the burden of the global trading system has been borne largely by the developing countries. And the Doha round, which was supposed to address this, did not really address this. So why should we, as developing countries, be worried about the collapse of the trading system if it didn't help us at all? No, I think, you know, it's a, it's a question of the relative, uh, you know, uh, uh, that we are talking about. It relatively did not help us. I would not say it did not absolutely help us, you know, because uh, we still have the disputes resolution mechanism where India did take, uh, you know, uh, US and the European Union, the some of the larger countries uh, to dispute, and some of the disputes we actually won, yeah, you know? and uh, uh, the and we were always hopeful that uh, somewhere down the line we would be able to push the Doha agenda forward and uh, we would be able to get some outcomes which will be more favorable to us you know in the coming years it's a different matter that because of uh, uh, the you know um, i would say hesitance of even a country like india uh, you know, not not really putting his best best foot forward especially after the uh, 2008 uh, downturn that we are in this kind of a mess so i don't think that you know we have anyone else to blame but uh, ourselves uh, to a very large extent. So what you're arguing is that the demise of the trading system is the worst outcome for everybody and including the developing countries that if essentially though the developed countries benefited much more, the developing countries had also seen some benefits and this is now going to actually reduce. Coming back to the issue that you raise about India, it does not appear 
that India is willing to take this to the multilateral platform. They seem to be seeking a direct dialogue with the United States to resolve, for instance, the steel and aluminum issue. Similarly, the European Union is also very reluctant to take it to the WTO system itself. Uh, they're not willing to take United States to WTO system, but they're saying we'll resolve it bilaterally. If this happens, wouldn't you argue that Trump's uh, agenda seems to be working? Uh, true. I think, you know, uh, I think what he's doing, uh, what uh, uh, Trump has done with the European Union is also offering some sops. Because Trump ultimately has been advised, I think, that, you know, you can't take the European Union head on. Uh, you have to, uh, uh, you know, have this broad Western coalition. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be in trouble when you're negotiating with maybe North Korea and China or even Russia for that matter. And Russia has now become a major threat to the Americans. So I think, uh, you know, there is a, there is a pattern uh, which is following in terms of giving these concessions. First he gave to Canada and Mexico, and now he's, he's talking about, he hasn't actually announced, he's talking about giving some to the European Union. Uh, with us, it's going to be very different. I do not think he is going to have, uh, you know, any, uh, you know, uh, feelings for us in the sense that, you know, we don't fall in his, uh, his kind of an orbit, although we think that, you know, we are part of this whole big American, you know, sort of uh, coalition. Uh, I don't, don't think uh, Trump really counts us as one of his allies. What Trump is actually interested in uh, is l large markets. And this is what he has sold to the, uh, his constituency that, look, I'm going to uh, act in a decisive manner so that you get access to large markets. And number two, wherever I find that countries are maintaining trade surplus vis-a-vis -vis us, we are going to clamp down and ensure that there is what he is now called reciprocity in trade. Now that's a, you know, reciprocity will have to be now redefined. You know, there's going to be Trumpism um, uh, that I think we'll have to have all these definitions uh, uh, on reciprocity once again. So, and no attempt to have a global discussion, but defining it as he sees it. That's right. That means every country has to have trade equality, as it were, in terms of uh, balances with the United States. And, of course, U.S. balances doesn't really matter because that's not what he's addressing. And complete unilateral definition of things like reciprocity yeah. and so on, yeah. which have never been a part of the WTO mandate. And, of course, uh, you know, for um, uh, as long as you can see the global governance structure, you know, go back in time, there have always been a case for non-reciprocity as far as the smaller countries are concerned. So you have never done this reciprocity thing. Uh, what I'm um, also worried about is the, the way he's been now using uh, the, uh, the provisions in, in the U.S. trade law. For instance, the latest attack is using the Section 301 of the Trade Act. Which also puts India on the dock. That is right. Now, uh, and we have to see. We, we have to wait for another few weeks to see what kind of an action is there because the re report is going to come out in the end of next month. Now, uh, the 301, there, were, there was a dispute uh, that the U EU had brought against the U.S. in the late 90s. And uh, there, there was a compromise reached. You know, it was kind of a settlement. You know, no, there were no winners and losers. Where uh, the U.S. Uh, was allowed to do the investigation by the WTO. But with a, uh, very, uh, uh, with, a, with, a, with a very clear guidance that you will not be able to uh, exercise all the provisions of your trade act and get after countries and retaliate. So short of retaliation, you can do an, all the investigation. You can name and shame and do whatever. Now, um, the, uh, all the uh, administrations since then have followed that golden rule. Trump has now crossed that. Uh, you know, line, yeah, with China, and uh, without uh, really allowing the WTO to adjudicate and find out whether uh, U.S. intellectual property is, is being, you know, sort of uh, illegally used in China, uh, he is determined. Uh, in the report that has been, uh, you know, has been presented to him, has determined that there is a fifty billion dollar loss. Now that determination in the WTO system has to be done by the WTO. WTO would actually investigate the uh, dispute process. 
make a determination of what is the extent of uh, loss and then uh, you know give the country which is suff suffering or which has actually suffered the loss uh, you know um, uh, uh, i would say uh, instruments in in this case uh, tariffs of e of equivalent proportion to the loss that has been incurred yeah? so this has to be worked out by an independent authority now the us has taken on itself to be the judge you know to uh, to be the investigator to be the judge and ultimately the execution. person executor yeah so so this is a fantastic world that we are in and uh, we may think that you know it's getting after china and there might be some uh, you know a lot of people who are happy that china is being put in place by the americans but we shouldn't be uh, because, because we could uh, be next in line we could be the next and in line if i remember correctly our uh, current economic advisor had advised the us uh, committee uh, i think the congressional committee Absolutely. that we should be put india should be put under sanctions yeah. because it is violating under 301 Uh, act of uh, 301 provisions yeah. some of our so called intellectual property that the us has is that correct precisely in in uh, you know there was this investigation done by but done by the 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 uh, us government investigator the us international trade commission which had done a thorough review what they call quote unquote of the indian trade and investment policies where our chief economic advisor is on record of having advised the us government that india is is a defaulter and india needs to be challenged in the wto so the american government should do it as soon as possible so i don't think that the american government is going to take uh, note of the advice that uh, cea gave that india should be taken to the wto i think they'll do exactly what they, they, they have done with the with the chinese they might come with their own unilateral kind of declaration declaration and then and in in our case uh, the situation is uh, could, could be a bit more complicated because uh, the uh, you know apart from patents uh, issue which we all know on the compulsory licensing and all the the big chunk of uh, american angst against us is about copyright enforcement now enforcement is a very very dangerous area and uh, you know if our government actually sort of uh, yields to american pressure and allow the americans to ensure that compliance of ip is you know take place in takes place in a uh, you know in the way the americans want it that means a direct interference in the way we govern this country that could be the entry point Giving which is what police powers to the americans within india absolutely i didn't want to say that uh, so <laughs> because the police <laughs> absolutely they they, they enforce do. they have to enforce the laws yeah uh, and 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 uh, so if if that happens then you know we are down the slip, slip, slippery slope i don't think many people are recognizing that fear uh, that we are actually we are sitting on a precipice and uh, we need to you know sort of uh, take cognizance of the dangers that uh, are uh, Uh, that lie ahead thank you very much bishujit for being with us we'll continue to discuss these issues with you and other issues as well this is all the time we have with news click today we will continue to watch what the united states does and what the indian government's response is on the issue of trade and also look at what the other global players are doing